Drivers need to see a stationary hazardous object in their lane far enough ahead to stop before hitting it, and this distance should be provided on all segments of all roads. Stopping sight distance is comprised of the distance required for a driver to perceive a need to stop and complete the braking process to bring their vehicle to a stop. These two components can be computed separately. D sub reaction is the reaction distance and D sub braking is the braking distance. The typical assumed reaction time and deceleration rate are based on research findings that encompass 90% or greater of a driver's and passenger vehicle's capabilities. These assumptions include conservative estimates of the properties present for wet pavements, poorly maintained vehicles, and elderly drivers. The reaction distance is the distance traveled in 2.5 seconds, which is the assumed 90th percentile value for unexpected stimulus. This is the first distance in the process and the distance that the vehicle will travel while the driver is perceiving a hazard and deciding how to react to that hazard. At the end of that distance, the driver is starting to begin the braking process. So the reaction distance, no braking is occurring. The driver is simply making the decision to apply the brakes to stop the vehicle. The second distance, therefore, is the braking distance. So this is the second distance in the stopping sight distance process. The braking distance is based on the assumed deceleration rate and the vehicle's speed. Grade can also play a role if the road is not flat. The important measurements for stopping sight distance are two feet. So whatever the object is, we're going to assume it has a height of two feet. And this is all built into the equations that we'll see later. And that the eye height of the driver is 3.5 feet. So those are the two assumptions that are built into these calculations and to stopping sight distance. Stopping sight distance can be an issue around horizontal curves where the terrain or vegetation can block the available sight distance for a driver to perceive a hazard. Sag vertical curves can also create issues. And in a sag vertical curve, what we're looking for is the roadway that's illuminated by the vehicle's headlights. So if you have some obstacle that's beyond, some hazardous object that's beyond those headlights, the driver cannot see until the headlight illuminates that object. So that's the issue we're worried about for sag vertical curves. And additionally, for a crest vertical curve, sight distance issues can be introduced by a driver not being able to see over the crest of that curve. So if we look at the what the driver can see, wouldn't be able to see this two foot high object there. And so that's what we're worried about with a crest vertical curve. So for either of these types of curves, these assumptions are built in to the recommendations from AASHTO in the green book. And we'll take a look at the equations that are used to develop the actual distances that are needed. And the overall idea here is that a driver needs to be able to see far enough along the roadway to safely stop when a hazard is present. And not only safely stop, but also complete the reaction distance and that full braking distance. These are the equations from AASHTO, both for English and metric units. As an example, for a design speed of 60 miles per hour, the reaction distance would be 220 feet, the braking distance 345 feet for a total of 565 feet for stopping sight distance for a 60 mile per hour level road. In metric terms, looking at 110 kilometers per hour, the reaction distance would be 77 meters, the braking distance would be 139 meters for a total stopping sight distance of 216 meters. So the top equation here uses the English units, D sub reaction, the reaction distance is 1.47 times the design speed in miles per hour, 
and the break reaction time in seconds. That's typically assumed to be 2.5 seconds. The 1.47 is simply a conversion factor because we're inputting the speeds in miles per hour and the time in seconds. So it's important to make sure you use those correct units. Again, speed, miles per hour, and reaction time in seconds, and that's for our reaction distance. Next, our braking distance, the equation is V squared, so our design speed squared, divided by 30 times the deceleration rate in feet per second, divided by 32.2, plus or minus the grade, if there's some grade on the roadway. The assumed deceleration rate is 11.2 feet per second squared, and grades, you can input zero if it's a flat grade, or positive or negative if there's an upgrade or a downgrade. Similarly, for the metric units, the equations are provided. The reaction distance is 0.278 times the design speed times the reaction time. And the deceleration rate for the braking distance is 3.4 meters per second squared. So those are our equations for stopping site distance.